You're watching 12 WKRC TV, a new generation of news. 12 News, first at four, starts now. This is Rich Jaffe in Bond Hill. When local and federal officials evicted 600 families from their homes here at Huntington Meadows, the hope was that at some point those families would once again see this property turn into low-income, affordable housing. Now it appears that may not be happening. 12 News has learned one developer who already had financing arranged to purchase the property and rehab it has already pulled out from the deal. George Newberry of Budget Real Estate says the city wants to demolish Huntington Meadows and build more upscale townhouses and single-family residences. The city community development director agrees that is the kind of mixed-use project they'd like to see here. Newberry says poor people in Cincinnati are living in a city that doesn't want them. While no one can fault the plan of trying to upscale this property, County Commissioner Todd Portune says it is a shame if indeed that plan is built on the backs of 600 families who had no place else to go. This is Rich Jaffe, first at four. And at six, did Cincinnati officials have something to gain from the eviction of more than 600 families from a local apartment complex? 12 News reporter Rich Jaffe investigates on 12 News tonight at six. You're watching 12 WKRC-TV, a new generation of news. 12 News at 6 starts now. New at 6 and only on 12 News, 600 families were forced out of these homes, and now 12 News has learned Cincinnati quietly changed its policy about what should be done with the property. Beyond a, a contract issue, there really is a moral issue. And it, you know, people in our community... Um, should be morally offended by what occurred. Good evening, everybody. 12 News has learned Cincinnati wants the Huntington Meadows apartment property changed into a mix of more upscale homes and shops. But that couldn't happen without the eviction last month of 600 families. The city says residents were evicted because of inept property management. But the developer who hoped to save the homes says he was blocked because the city wants the land developed, a charge the city denies. In this exclusive story, 12 News reporter Rich Jaffe says one thing is clear. Plans for the Bond Hill property have definitely changed. Where 1,100 low-income families once made their homes, Huntington Meadows is now a ghost town. Last month, prior to her eviction, when Tracy Harris listened to potential renovation plans from a team of possible buyers called Budget Real Estate, she said it would be tough to ever trust another owner on the property. I'm ready to settle down and raise my family, and I don't ever want to go through this again. 12 News has learned while they had private financing in place, budget real estate has now pulled out of negotiations with Fannie Mae to buy Huntington Meadows. In this email, budget partner George Newberry tells us, after meeting with city officials, the city of Cincinnati is intent on limiting the supply of affordable housing within city limits. He goes on to say, and the city seems to hope that Huntington Meadows is demolished completely and converted to townhomes and single-family residences, which will attract higher-income families. Cincinnati's Community Development Director Peg Myrtle says Newberry's assessment of what the city would like to see here isn't too far off base. However, she says the city is making major strides to try and provide affordable housing elsewhere. It's our belief, based on the meetings that we'd had with community residents and uh, up to this point, on the feedback that came from uh, a wide range of, of stakeholders and on council's direction that uh, that continuing that project as 1100 units of uh, low-income housing would not be favorably received. Yet less than a year ago in this letter to City Council Myrtle said the threat of closing Huntington Meadows would have a significant impact on the neighborhood saying it was one of few complexes to welcome young mothers with children. But in a matter of weeks this fall, hundreds of families were forced out of their homes in an effort to empty the buildings so they could be sold. It actually would be a very good development for the city and, and for Bond Hill. But there's a right way to go about that stuff and there's a wrong way to go about that stuff. I mean, you, you don't pursue a shift in policy um, and a shift in, in development interests on the backs of people who did no wrong. Rich Jaffe, 12 News. Peg Myrtle says in the six-month period between her letter to council and the first talk of evictions, the city became increasingly concerned about the property's financial future. When the owners filed for bankruptcy, city officials decided a different use for the property would be more appropriate. City officials say they are not trying to limit affordable housing and that George Newberry's allegation is wrong. From the team on your side, this is 9 News at 5. 
But tonight, Nine News has learned that there could still be a few families trying to stay put. Nine News reporter Steve Johnson live tonight in Bond Hill with more on that story. Steve? Well, Clyde, take a look over my shoulders. You'll see a lot of boarded up windows and doors here at Bond Hill. Now, that would probably give you the impression that everyone's gone. This place is empty. We got that same impression when we knocked on at least a dozen doors. But tonight, there are a lot of rumors about at least two families trying to stay right here. The writing is on the wall at Huntington Meadows. It's a ghost town. I heard that people, the people are basically they are illegal, you know. But Nine News has learned there could be people living behind these boarded up windows. We went to the management office to see what they've heard. They wouldn't go on camera, but you can hear what little they had to say. Is there anyone living in any of the apartments? I don't know. We don't. So if they're here, they're not supposed to be, though, right? Uh, I don't know. Sherry, you know what I mean? I mean, I can give you Jerry and his number. No one answered at Jerry's number. Meanwhile, maintenance workers continue to board up windows. A tow truck driver removes abandoned cars, and final disconnection notices from Synergy are taped to doors. Where's Mama's baby? Hi, Ginger. Linda Neal used to live in Huntington Meadows. Now she just comes by every now and then to feed stray cats. Neil says just a few weeks ago, she knew of at least two families trying to stay put. A couple who lived across the street on Rhode Island from where I lived and another lady that lived on Langdon Farm. We know for a fact that there's still four families on the books for eviction. Herbert Walker is with the Hamilton County Community Action Agency. They've helped at least 300 Huntington Meadows families find homes. Walker sends this message to anyone who's still living there. There's a family still out there. We're saying contact us so we can help them. Herbert Walker says the final eviction notices will be served to those four families tomorrow. Meanwhile, it is still unknown tonight what will happen to this huge apartment complex. I talked to County Hamilton County Commissioner Todd Fortune. He tells me that several developers have come forward with interest in buying and rehabbing this apartment complex, but right now it is still in the hands of Habitat America. They own the property. They are in Alexandria, Virginia, and tonight they are not talking. Clyde Carroll, back to you. All right, Steve Johnson live in Bond Hill. Thanks a lot. You're watching 12 WKRC-TV, a new generation of news. 12 News at Noon starts now. In more local news now, the company interested in purchasing a troubled Bond Hill apartment complex has purchased its sister property in Columbus.